Actually, or you did, maybe you didn't actually bite. Well, it was, an, it was a sheer accident, actually, because um, I got a lot of... Well, wait a minute. Let, before, we, before you start explaining it, let's tell them what you did. Bit the head off a bat. There, yeah. I said it. It wasn't Batman. It was like uh, a bat. Uh. No, 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 no! You can do it, Ozzy! Bite his freaking head off! No! Have you eaten a bat before? Well, today we're diving into one of the most insane moments in rock history. The night Ozzy Osbourne bit the head off a bat. I'm gonna throw up. Don't throw up. You're gonna be I fine. I actually think I'm gonna throw no, up. You're not. Yes, you heard that right. It's gross, it's chaotic, and it's pure rock and roll madness. So buckle up, because this story is just as wild as it sounds. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and let's dive right in. All right, before we get into that night in Des Moines, we need to set the stage. By the time 1982 rolled around, Ozzy was already a legend. And not just for his music. The guy had a reputation for being one of the most outrageous and unpredictable rock stars ever. We're talking about a man who once threw a live dove into a press conference. On March 27, 1981, Ozzy Osbourne attended Epic Records' annual sales convention at the suggestion of his manager and future wife Sharon Arden. Osbourne was scheduled to talk about the U.S. release of Blizzard of Oz, the plan was for three doves to be released after he finished to impress the executives at the event. Unfortunately, Osborne was a little drunk on brandy and bored with the presentation, so he took matters into his own hands. As recalled by the singer in Mick Wall's Black Sabbath biography, Symptom of the Universe, Osborne noted that a PR woman was giving a long-winded speech about his music. When she was finished, Osborne went up to the woman and asked her if she liked animals. In retelling the story to Wall, Osborne went on to add, Then I pulled out one of these doves and bit its head off, just to shut her up. Then I did it again with the next dove, spitting the head out on the table. And the woman fell on the floor screaming. Yeah, Ozzy was not exactly known for subtlety. But believe it or not, the whole bat incident might not have been a deliberate act. We'll get to the juicy details soon, but just know that at this point in his career, Ozzy's concerts weren't just about the music. They were a show, chaotic, unpredictable, and sometimes downright bizarre. Now let's fast forward to January 20th, 1982. Picture this, a sold out concert venue in Des Moines, Iowa. The air is electric, fans are hyped beyond belief. Ozzy's on stage doing what he does best, screaming into the mic, jumping around, and giving fans the craziest night of their lives. Now here's where things get weird. In the middle of this chaos, someone in the crowd decides to throw a bat, yes, an actual real bat, onto the stage. No one really knows why. Maybe the fan thought it was funny. Maybe they wanted to get Ozzy's attention. Or maybe they just wanted to test his limits. But here's the kicker. The bat wasn't just dead. It was only mostly dead. Now here's what happened next. Brace yourself because it's gross. Ozzy, thinking the bat was just a rubber toy, picks it up. The crowd is going wild and Ozzy, never one to back down, decides, well, what the heck? And he bites the bat's head off. Yep, right there, on stage, in front of thousands of screaming fans. And as soon as his teeth sink into it, Ozzy realizes something is very, very wrong. The bat wasn't fake, it was real, and it was still a little bit alive. Grossed out yet? Imagine how Ozzy felt. Later, Ozzy said he knew something was off the moment he bit into it because it tasted warm and crunchy. You, the crowd, they went absolutely nuts. Some were horrified. Others probably thought, yep, that's Ozzy for you. Okay, so let's talk about the aftermath. After the concert, Ozzy's team was like, uh, dude, you just bit into a bat. You need to get checked out now. They rushed him to the nearest hospital where Ozzy had to get a series of rabies shots. For those of you who don't know, rabies is no joke. If left untreated, it can be fatal. So yeah, Ozzy paid the price for that stunt, not just with needles, but with the story following him for the rest of his career. The incident blew up in the media, and before long, Ozzy was known not just for his music, but as the guy who bit the head off a bat. It's one of those moments that became rock legend, whether you love it or hate it. And here's the funny thing. Ozzy didn't shy away from the story. In fact, he leaned into it. Over the years, fans would show up to his concerts dressed as bats, and Ozzy even sold bat-themed merch. What started as a gross accident became part of the mythos of Ozzy Osbourne. So, what's the takeaway here? Well, if there's one thing we can learn from this story, it's this. Life's unpredictable. Sometimes you think you're biting into a rubber toy, and it turns out to be a real bat. 
But hey, you roll with the punches, get your rabies shots, and turn your mistakes into legendary stories. That's the story of Ozzy and the Bat. If you found this story as insane as I did, drop a like, share it with a friend, and hit that subscribe button for more wild stories like this one. And remember, next time someone throws a bat at you, maybe just leave it on the ground.